Hi, my name is Don Foster. I've been in the brick industry 32 years now, and I would like to break those years down into four areas or phases. But first, let me tell you about this course. Credits earned on completion of this course will be reported to AIA, CES for AIA members. Certificates of completion for both AIA members and non-AI members are available upon request. This course is registered with AIA CES for continuing professional education. As such, it does not include content that may be deemed or construed to be an approval or endorsement by the IA of any material or construction or any method or manner of handling, using, distributing, or dealing in any material or product. This presentation is protected by U.S. and international copyright laws. Reproduction, distribution, display, and use of the presentation without written permission of the speaker, who is me, is prohibited. This one-hour on-demand program teaches participants how to make new construction match existing masonry. Participants will observe a number of projects in which matching was attempted and discover why some failed and others succeeded. Topics include selecting the right brick, making use of the physical brick blending process, selecting a masonry coloring process, and specifying matching masonry in architectural plans. The presenter is an expert on the subject matter with over 32 years of hands-on experience in the brick industry. At the end of this course, participants will be able to, one, describe the factors that contribute to poor brick matches, two, develop a workable plan to find matching brick and such brick is available. Three, describe the mechanical brick blending process and plan to use that process to match a range of brick colors using more than one type of brick. And four, compare the pros and cons of masonry coloring systems and select a proven masonry system that works best for any particular job. Last is five, specify brick matching in architectural plans. Now back to the four phases of my masonry experience. Phase one was hands-on learning about every aspect of the brick making process. I actually started working at the Hanley Brick Plant located in Somerville, Pennsylvania, which today is owned and operated by Glengarry Brick Corporation. I was a college student back then just looking for a summer job. I started at the very bottom of the brick manufacturing process. During my first week, along with four other guys, we cleaned out the manganese grinding room. It was three feet of very fine ground clay, manganese, and iron oxides that all fell off the conveyor belts over the years. It was and is the dirtiest job in brick making. Two weeks later, I got an opportunity to make shapes by hand, a job that I got to do most of the summer. The special shapes opened my eyes to the architectural details that are in many brick buildings. Not only did we form the shapes, but we put the coatings on the shapes before and at times after they were fired. Coating brick would play an important part in my working life. At the end of the summer, I was young and foolish enough to love the work. So when they asked me to stay on full time, I agreed. I had the opportunity to set the brick going into the kiln and also package brick coming out of the kiln. The picture shows one of my coworkers packaging a two-way blended range of brick. Later, I sprayed slurries, on globes, clay coats, and glazes, eventually becoming the glaze foreman of the Hanley plants. Phase two was learning about the big picture of brick manufacturing, the scheduling and production side of brick making. Here I am pictured when I was a glaze foreman. I got involved in many production and scheduling decisions. This experience helped me to later get promoted to distribution manager at a Glengarry brick plant located in Bigler, Pennsylvania. As a distribution manager, I was responsible for production, scheduling, quality control, and every aspect of planning gear to keep production at full capacity. Phase three is sales. After two and a half years at the Bigler plant, I was promoted to architectural sales rep. In addition to my own sales responsibilities, I was overseeing 26 brick distributors. My territory included northern Indiana and all of Michigan except for the Detroit and Ann Arbor areas. From architectural sales rep, I became district sales manager for a short time until I was promoted to regional sales manager, which moved me from Michigan to central Ohio. Whereas regional sales manager of Ohio, I oversaw two brick plants there located in Iberia and Caledonia, Ohio and also the Hanley plant in Pennsylvania, where I originally started and learned how to make brick. 
That was 17 years of my life. Eventually, I had a great opportunity to become president and part owner of a brick distributor located in South Bend, Indiana, and oversaw all architectural sales there. During all my years selling brick, I saw just about every brick-related problem a customer could have. I was particularly interested in the issue of brick matching, how to make sure that a later repair or addition to an older structure would match, even when the original brick was no longer available. Today I am vice president of a masonry staining firm that has a proprietary proven masonry stain. With co-owner and company president Rick Connor, we have over 60 years combined experience in the brick industry. We share this information with you today because we bring a unique, authentic, and reliable perspective to brick matching. I have been solving problems involving the color of every kind of porous masonry, brick, stone, manufactured stone, block, and even mortar. I'm here today to share what I've learned. As we go through the rest of this presentation, you may have questions or comments. Please feel free to write them down as we go. You might even want to type them directly into an email addressing them to me, rickman at gmail.com. I want to enjoy hearing from you, and we'll try to address all your questions just as quickly as possible. And that's how I learn too. I learn from you. Let's begin by exploring the reasons for poor brick matches. Would you let this happen to your house or project you're working on? This poor match can destroy the value of the property and can affect the image of the neighborhood. Why would anyone do this or let this happen? We can only guess maybe the owner was truly in a financial bind and could not afford quality work or someone simply did not care. Or more likely, it was a matter of poor planning. Maybe he asked for the same brick by name, and this is what he got. Maybe he started looking too late. So he had to settle for a brick that was available, but that didn't match well. In this wall, the brick are identical. All of the apparent color change is a result of mortar color. This is a good example showing when the mortar color is off, the effect it has on the brick color itself. Here's another example of a wall in which the brick colors are identical. Again, all the apparent color difference is a result of the difference in mortar color. An example with modular sized brick, the mortar color represents 18 to 20 percent of the wall. Here is a project that was laid with gray natural mortar, and it was supposed to be laid with a white mortar. The upper part of the wall is how it looked before. The lower part was a test panel. Only the mortar on this job was stained with a proven masonry stain. But as you can see again, the change in mortar color has an effect on the apparent color of the brick. One more time back to this slide. If the property owner ever had the resources to make these colors match, he should have done it. A better appearance would increase the value and the usefulness of the property. Maybe he was simply unaware of his options. Here's a large building showing evidence of exactly the same kinds of problems. There are people that do not understand brick matching, and their lack of knowledge results in some costly mistakes. A mason walks in the door to the brick distributor, says, I need so many brick, tells them what color. They don't have that color to match. He says, what do you have closest? They walk out in the distributor's yard. They find this brick, and he lays it. This brick fill-in is what's on the back of a school, and it is not a very good match at all. How hard are they really trying? We know exactly what went wrong here. The architect wanted to match this wall. The brick dealer gave him a three-brick strap and told him that this brick would be a good match. The architect looked at the three bricks and decided that they were similar in color to the bricks in the wall. Of course, once the brick were laid in a filled test panel, as shown, it was clear that the new brick were not a good match at all. The three brick strap did not represent all of the color range in the brick, nor did it represent the percentages of those colors. As shown here, there was, a, there was good planning by the architect having a fill panel built for approval prior to the brick being installed. Now that the fill panel is rejected, take a close look at the new samples that the architect has to work with. No one is doing their homework here when they are presenting the architect with options that all have the wrong colors, the wrong sizes, and the wrong textures. How hard are they really trying? Imagine the frustration of the architect and owner at this time. 
this project was closed in and ready for brick to be laid to keep the project on schedule. I got a phone call one day from a mason who's trying to find a brick match to a wall. He asked me if I was by a computer and could I look at the picture and advise him. As I pulled the picture up, the first thing I asked him was, do you still have that brick in your hand? He said yes. I said, do the ends of the brick match the, the face that you're showing me? And he says, no, how did I know that? And I said, is the opposite face match those ends? He said, yeah, how could I tell? I said, because you're showing me the back of the brick. It's really important to have get as close as you can with the texture for matchability. Texture is key, even if you're going to add color later. Brick matching involves many opportunities for mistakes, but if you plan well, you can be successful. This was a winter project. An addition was constructed under the protection of a temporary shelter. The brick on the right were part of the new addition and were meant to match those on the left. When the temporary shelter was removed and the brick were cleaned, the owner was very unhappy. The contractor either didn't know how to match brick or didn't take the time to do it right. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to make great brick matches. But before we do that, let's review. Why do people settle for poor brick matches as we've seen? Not enough money or time? Started the search too late? Thought that the brick with the same name always matches? Ignored the mortar color? Did not get a complete sample? Did not know that matching was possible using a proven masonry stain? Follow these three rules in order to get a match every time. Rule one, find matching brick. It is important to begin your search as early as possible. The earlier you start, the more options you will have and the greater your chances of achieving the best result. When I was selling brick, I'd often get a phone call from an architect or contractor who needed to find a matching brick right away, maybe even in just a few days. I'd work long hours trying to help, but a really good search takes time. Sometimes the customer got an inferior match just because he or she waited too long to call. Look for the same brick manufactured at the same plant. If you find it, be sure to get a sample that shows you the full range of color and the percentages of each color. You might wonder why you need a sample when you are purchasing the very same brick manufactured at the very same brick plant. This next slide will provide the answer. I believe this brick is called a Cortez. It's all the same brick made at the same plant 15 years apart. The newer brick is on the top and does not match the older brick on the bottom of the wall. There are so many variables in brick manufacturing that over time the processes might even change. Not only the brick colors not match, there is even a variation in the texture of the brick as well. If your brick are no longer made at the same plant, thousands may be sitting in one of the distributor's yards scattered throughout the country. Have your local distributor search for you. If you find the brick you need, make sure the distributor has the quantity you need also. If you can't find the same brick from the same plant, try getting the same brick from the same manufacturer but made at a different plant they own. Again, it is important to always get a complete sample. Here is another example of two panels showing the same brick from the same manufacturer but made at two different brick plants. Making brick involves so many variables as we mentioned before, from the quarry to the grinding room to the extruder to the kiln. That brick made at different plants, even brick with the same name, will rarely match. If you get close, but most of the time brick from different plants will be as different as this, and usually the differences are even more extreme. Let's review rule number one, find the brick. Find if the brick are still being made today. It is important to start your search as early as possible. The more time you have, the more options you have. This will give you the chance of achieving the best result. If the brick are still made today, make sure it is from the same manufacturing plant. From time to time, brick companies make the same brick at different plants they own. A brick might just be sitting around. Have your local brick dealer do a search. Watch for the changes in color and texture if it's the same manufacturer, but a different plant. They try hard, but there are so many variables in brick making. A 40 to 100 piece fill panel can show you the entire range of colors and percentages of each of those colors. If the original manufacturer cannot help you and the brick you want are not available on distributor's lots, proceed to rule two, blending. Try to find another manufacturer who can supply the brick you need. 
especially in the case where a run of brick have a significant range of color to it. Although you may find a brick that matches one of the target colors, it is extremely likely that you will find a brick from another manufacturer that has the entire range of colors you are seeking. The best you can do is to try to get two or more types of bricks that together give you the range you need for the project. That's why rule number two is called blending, because it always involves physical arranging two or more types of brick before they are laid on the wall. Getting all of your brick from a single manufacturer is best because the manufacturer can take responsibility for blending the brick for you. The manufacturer can bring pallets of the different kinds of brick together in the same location. They can mix or blend them together on other pallets or cubes and then ship the pallets or cubes to the worksite. The masons can then pull them off the pallets or cubes and lay them without worrying about color. If they have been blended together correctly, the wall should have the correct mixture and arrangement of colors. Here's one manufacturer's effort to match the complete range of an existing wall using brick from several plants. The first question that should be asked here is, what are we matching? Should we try to match the color of today's building with all the atmospheric dirt on it, or should we clean an area and try to match that instead? In this case, the architect preferred to match the clean area. They had cleaned in the middle of the wall pictured behind the sample boards. Blending becomes increasingly difficult when more than one manufacturer becomes involved. They are competitors, and it can be difficult to coordinate shipment times and places. They are likely to disagree on where the blending should take place and about how it should be done or who is responsible. One approach is to ask your brick distributor whether he or she would be willing to blend the brick on pallets in his or her location before delivering to the project. The types of brick that you blend together should be compatible in size. It is best if they all match each other in face height, length, and bed depth. The bed depth isn't necessarily a problem if the vault solve as long as the job has the appropriate airspace at the cavity. Where the bed depth is a problem, especially with the size variation, is when you are blending more than a couple of cubes. If the brick are packaged cubed edge set, it is difficult to get the bands tight. Loose brick and cubes is a safety problem for everyone from the yard guy, truck driver, to the mason. The cubes are difficult to impossible to stack. Another option could be that stacking the brick flat on a pallet. But this, as you know, can slow down a mason who is used to tonging nine to 11 brick at a time. If your new structure will be attached to the brick you are trying to match, then it will be best if the new brick matches the old, at least in face height and in length. The portions of the colors used here in the picture may have led to a bad result no matter how they were blended. Although this is an extreme case, the stair step zipper patterns are always a possibility when doing mechanical blending. Let's review rule number two, blending. Using the same manufacturer for all the brick is the simplest option. Using multiple manufacturers adds many more variables to your project. If you must use two or more manufacturers, see if you can get the blending done at the distributor's location. Also, is the brick compatible? In general, bricks being blended must be compatible with each other and the original brick. Evaluate size, including height, length, and bed depth. When mechanical blending is required, make sure the bricks will be laid in the correct percentages and with correct placement and arrangement of the various colors. When rule number one and rule number two have been exhausted, we move to rule number three, color enhancement. Follow this rule in three situations. One, when you cannot obtain a good match using the rule number one and two, that is when you can neither find the original brick nor create a blend that matches. Or two, when blending is too difficult or expensive. Or three, when the wrong color brick has already been laid or has been blended incorrectly. Here's an example of a blend that would be very difficult to repeat mechanically. Look at the wall in terms of are the black or white brick or pink brick clustered together in any way? Are there big voids? Are the white brick touching? Are the black brick touching? Are they stair-stepped? In general, the blend on the pallet is what will be laid in the wall. Maces work very hard to lay the brick both carefully and efficiently. 
They cannot operate at their normal pace if they have to spend time noticing and adjusting the pattern of colors. They know that's not an efficient way to work, and they will be reluctant to even try it. To match a wall like this one, you could take advantage of rule three, color enhancement, by using a proven masonry stain. Be aware that not all stain companies are the same. They use different processes. When selecting a system for coloring masonry, you simply cannot trust advertising claims. It is too easy for companies to color their masonry, get paid, and not worry about what will happen to their work years down the road. Like the large well-known stain company responsible for this job, this is not a proven masonry stain. You cannot trust that a color system will last because of a warranty. Consider this job, which was warranty to last 25 years and which look like this in less than 10. Some companies have warranties that provide very little protection. For example, if their paint or stain fails, they will give you a free bucket of the same paint or stain. One company pushes everyone to take advantage of their low-cost sealant after staining, but doesn't mention that the use of a sealant can void the warranty on the coloring. Do not just trust warranties alone. This particular project was a school that the architect and owner was very creative in the design of, of colors and textures. They had a smooth gray utility. They put a band of a bark gray utility of the same color. And then they added a band, a four brick band of a red chipped face textured brick, all in utility size. What happened was the gray smooth brick when it got shipped to the job site had a huge range to it and needed to be stained to a tight range so the brick and the textures could actually do the work that was intended it to do for the design and look. The gray smooth and gray bark textured brick were to be the same color. What it looks like here when they went to stain the smooth grays to match the gray bark, that this unproven stain company put down a primer coat and then added the color on top of that. Of course, now you can see that the color on top began to erode quickly with the passage of time. This clock tower, the focal point of a university campus, was all to be a nice, tight colored range. It was 10 years ago. The stain company is not honoring its warranty. It's, in fact, it's 25 year warranty because the building had been sealed. Do not always rely on warranties. Trust the best evidence of a proven masonry stain system, jobs that have stood the test of time. In this picture, there is no overhanging roof protecting these walls. They are all exposed. This is a job that was completed in 2002. After 13 years of brutal South Bend winters and hot summers, of lake effect snow and pelting rain, it still looks great today. So if your coloring company says its product lasts more than 10 years or more than 20 years, ask for a list of jobs that prove that claim. You only want to specify a proven masonry stain system for your projects. One coloring option out there is to use paint. Paint can adhere to a surface that is not absorbent, but it also tends to seal the surface, which may trap water. Trapped water can be a problem because it will alternately freeze and thaw, and the expansion when it freezes can damage your brick. Paint can be sprayed or rolled on. Paint looks like paint, and paint lasts about as long as paint. Expect to have it have to reapply it, making it a maintenance situation. A proven masonry stain system, on the other hand, will not adhere to a non-absorptant surface. Absorption is key. On the positive side, it will not trap moisture, and it is applied with a brush so that patterns can be created within each brick if needed. Masonry that has been stained rather than painted also looks just like unstained masonry of a different color. There's never an unnatural shine. Finally, in vertical applications, proven masonry stain lasts as long as the surface of the masonry itself.
Another characteristic of a proven masonry stain is this. It simply cannot peel, it cannot crack, and it cannot blister. Because it doesn't ever create a new surface, it is absorbed into the existing surface. It's absorbed into the pore structure of the brick. And that's another reason why we say absorption is so key to the process of a proven masonry stain. Also, a proven masonry stain will not fade. Finally, proven masonry stain is translucent. Therefore, if you use a single stain mix on a wall that has a significant range of color, the color shifts, but the range can remain. Stain added over the original color produces a third color. Here's an example. If you're making a red brick orange and using paint, you just pick the orange color you want and apply it. It will cover the surface. But a proven masonry stain starts with the color yellow. They put yellow over the red, and when it dries, the yellow and red will create a new color, orange. Here's an example. The brick in the upper right did not match the brick on the left. However, they did have a range of color that was similar to the range of color on the left. There was a small percent of the wall color that worked in the new brick, so it was like paint by number. Several new colors were adding, taking out the colors that did not work, creating a two-for-one change and making a great match for this project. The picture in the bottom is a great example that shows how the brick could be stained to match while preserving the range of color. While we were considering this job, the upper picture was taken in 2001 after the right side had been stained. To closely match the left side. The lower picture was taken in direct sunlight in 2008, seven years later. Notice that the two sides still match and that both sides have the same range of color. This job was revisited in 2013, 12 years after the original staining had been performed, and it still looks just as good today. This is another great example how well a proven masonry stain can perform. For some reason that many painting companies advertise themselves as stain companies, you can identify them in several ways. First, if you splash some water on their jobs or sample panels, you will notice a shine that you don't see on natural masonry. Second, sometimes you will actually find them using the words latex or acrylic in their literature, test data, or MSDS sheets, product sheets, data sheets, those kind of things. Or they sometimes come up with a cute other name for the same type of product. Third, in my experience, they will refuse to show you any examples of their work that have lasted more than 15 years, even though they claim that they've been around a lot longer than that. I'm not saying that this product is bad, but it is not a proven masonry stain by the standards that are set. The company that colored these bricks on an Ohio Medical Center claimed to be using a long-lasting stain. In less than two years after application, however, this picture was taken. Notice the blisters on the surface already. That simply can't happen with a proven masonry stain system. The stain pigment particles are just too small to create a vapor seal. They attach themselves individually to the inner pore structure of the masonry. There's no paint-like surface that can blister or crack or peel on a proven masonry stain. Here's another a job by a paint company pretending to be a stain company. In this case, the latex paint was greatly diluted in an effort to persuade the customer that a deep penetrating stain was being used. Instead of a long lasting, natural looking stain job, the customer got a bad paint job. I have nothing against paint. It's paint pretending to be a proven masonry stain that should be avoided. When you know you will be staining some of or all of your brick, save time, trouble, and expense by selecting the best brick for the job. Always choose a brick that will absorb water. Proven masonry stain lasts long and looks natural because if it's fine ground 80 to 100 mesh iron oxide pigments are actually drawn into the pore structure of the brick and bonded to those pores, still allowing the brick to breathe naturally. 
If the brick had been sealed, or if they are simply too dense to absorb water, the stain will not be absorbed either. Try this simple water test. Wet the brick. If the surface darkens temporarily until the water evaporates, as in the picture on the left, then they will accept stain. If the water simply beads up and runs off without changing the color of the brick, they are not absorbent and cannot be stained with a proven masonry stain. Your first priority is to find absorbent brick in the right size. From brick that meet those criteria, select those with a texture that closely matches the texture of the wall you are trying to match. Two bricks that are stained to closely match in color will appear different in the wall if the textures are different, especially in different lighting and angles of the sun. Once you have found some absorbent brick in the right size and texture, try to select the brick that is close in color to what you want. You might evolve your stain company in the decision at this point. It is often less expensive to make a small color change than a larger color change. If you cannot find a brick close in color, find one that is close to matching the background color of the target brick. Once you find the base color, use a proven masonry stain that can do the rest by adding any other colors that are required in, in the correct percentages and with proper placement of those percentages. Have your stain contractor demonstrate the plan for the job by doing a sample panel showing the percentages and the plan for placement. Once you approve the panel, the contractor can match the appearance of the panel throughout the project. For this job, the contractor could not find the right brick using rules one and two. Therefore, he selected a brick that was the right size. Although the texture did not match exactly, they were close and it was the best he could find. In addition, the color change needed was not extreme. Here we see the donor brick laid in the wall. This building was damaged by a vehicle impact. As you can see, the matching size allowed for a good sound structural repair. The remaining issues are the colors of the mortar and of the brick. After staining, the result is not perfect, mainly because of the texture difference, but it is still a repair to be proud of. When matching a wall, never think in terms of perfection. Masonry color is not about perfection. It's about natural ranges of color and harmonious blends that look good. In this project, the mortar was colored hence first or stained, then the brick were colored. Here's a project where rules one and two were exhausted. They couldn't find a brick to match and they couldn't find a couple of brick to blend together to work. So they're looking for a good base color or donor brick that match size and texture so the brick panels could be stained. In the case of the three bricks shown, the texture of the brick was really a fine grind wire cut brick. And the brick on the building to match was a much coarser ground texture, much coarser texture, wire cut texture. So what was decided was to pass on all three of these brick and do a search for a brick that had a much coarser texture and would also match in size that they're looking for. The brick stacked on the right is the new coarser donor brick, a brick made from the Belden Brick Company called a 505 blend. The body was a little more coarse of a grind matching the original brick much better than some of the ones that they looked at before. The brick stacked on the left are the same Belden 505s after being color enhanced with a proven masonry stain system. When the architect looked at the brick stacked on the left, he thought it was looking really close, but he also wanted a darker one added to that range that he saw on the wall. Even though it was a small percent, the stain company had no problem. The one thing about a proven masonry stain system is that it's very flexible and can be adjusted to meet whatever the architect requires. We do not use the word perfect, but a proven masonry stain can produce a good match that does the job. This is an after picture of a project that had been color enhanced. Here's what it looked like before it was stained to color correct the stone and mortar from a repair. And here's the after picture again of that same wall. You've seen this slide before in this presentation. One manufacturer offered brick from several plants to try to match the range of the clean portion of the wall. He started by displaying the mini boards, some of which seemed to be including promising candidates for the new portion of the wall. Next, the dealer stacked some brick shown in the left foreground to try to work out a blend. At this stage, care should be taken to make sure the brick being offered matched the original brick in size, texture, and again, to the extent as possible, as close in color. Here's where the brick dealer and stain company work together to give the customer a good result using Rule 2 and Rule 3. The fill panel here was created by blending two of the dealer's brick samples and then staining only 20% of them. 
The focus was on adding colors that were present in the original wall, but that could not be found in the new brick. By stating more of the brick, they could have created an even better match, but the customer wanted to keep costs down. That is another flexibility of staining. The new wall looked very nice and matched the older construction well enough that everyone was pleased. These were the three local dealers' best possible choices to match this building. The stain company was to pick one that they wanted to color enhance with a proven masonry stain. The stain company chose the panel in the middle and color enhanced it with a proven masonry stain system. Here's a closer view of the color enhanced middle panel. We have seen that brick often have a noticeable range of color even within a single run, but color can vary even within a single brick. Here, the donor brick on the far left need to match the brick on the right. The brick in the middle show how the donor brick looked after staining. In this case, the texture of the donor brick did not exactly match the texture of the original brick, but it was close enough to look good. One characteristic of a proven masonry stain system is that it is applied artistically with a brush and never sprayed or rolled on. Consequently, matching patterns like these is very possible. Some brick manufacturers have changed from using solid fuels in the brick firing process like coal and sawdust to gas, which is very clean. Losing the zinc flash look and a lot of okra and natural flash colors. Staining will and can bring those colors back. Also good to note that some of the manufacturers are changing to mechanical packaging, which can take away some of the flexibility they once had when it came to blending brick. As mentioned before, not all stain companies are the same. Some manufacture their own materials, others don't. Some offer 25 year warranties, but can't show you a 10 or 15 year old job. Here are three clues to watch for. A product that is sprayed on like a paint, a product that leaves a sheen like a paint, especially when the light is just right or when it rains, you can see every brick they touched. A product that's made by mixing water with acrylic or latex paint. They do this to thin the acrylic or latex to look more like a stain. Maybe your stain company is really a paint company. You may be surprised how many stain companies buy their products at a paint store. The BIA is the Brick Institute of America, and they're awesome. They promote and safeguard the clay brick industry. There has been a request sent to the BIA to write a technical note on proven masonry staining. If you go to the BIA's website, there are so many tech notes that they have written over the years to safeguard and protect brick. Always remember, not all stain companies are the same. What we color the brick with should safeguard the brick, protect the brick's integrity, and in no way damage the brick in any way. Notre Dame University. Here's where you can take the old and match the new. See the building on the far bottom right? They created a special blend. Then they matched the original building to the new addition. First the mortar was stained. Then the five different runs of brick were all stained to closely match the new three-story building on the far right. And even though within those five different runs the texture varied, this turned out to be a very nice looking project. Staining can always be represented in a short amount of time, no major construction required. The color formulas are already made and can be easily repeated. The process of how to apply it is already determined. You already know the percentages and placement we talked about earlier and how important that is. Lifetime is lifetime. Using the right company can make the brick even better. Let's take a look at this picture again. Placement. The stain company can choose if you want two black brick touching, stair-stepped, never touching, or just cluster all of them together. They can take a brick that doesn't belong or make it a match in the building that does two for one, which creates a significant change. There's extreme flexibility with brick staining. You can actually mirror the wall that you're trying to match. 
with all the different colors and patterns that are required. This house, as we showed you before, has never been touched by any stain company. But this is a good example of what a mechanical blend can look like. The original wall in the rear and on the right side of the slide, it was made with a brown brick that was later discontinued. Now the owner is doing it in addition. The orange brick stacked on the left is a sister brick manufactured at the same brick plant, same process, just a different color to the original. It was used as the donor brick and color enhanced to closely match the brown. The stack of the brown brick to the right is the same orange donor brick, color enhanced to closely match the older wall. Here's an example of something we mentioned earlier. Years ago, they fired with solid fuels such as coal sawdust, but today many have changed over to gas, which is much cleaner. In many cases, this has caused us to lose some of those colors that we talked about in the firing process, such as the zinc and okra colors. That is why the fill panel here made of newer brick doesn't match the wall real well. The brick in the wall was manufactured many years ago before the changeover to gas happened. Here coloring only 20 to 30% of the brick was enough to produce a good match. This is the same panel shown earlier. The difference is that the brown brick that did not belong has been colored to create blue greens, yellow greens, and grassy greens. This is that two for one example we talked about because they removed some of the colors that do not belong and add a color that does belong in one single step. A proven masonry stain is not just about how it looks during the first year or even during the first few years. It's about how it will look and how it will match decades down the road. Proven masonry stain changes nothing but the color of the brick. Its texture, its strength, and its weathering characteristics remain as they always were. The original unstained brick wall and the wall stained to match it will weather in parallel for as long as they stand. This picture was taken in July of 2015. Around 80% of the wall to the left of the expansion joint was color enhanced in June of 2000. The target brick was no longer available and they could not find a donor brick to match this rough textured extruded brick. The architect was comfortable with staining and found a sand molded brick that could be used as a plain canvas on which to add the other colors that were needed. So the plan was to leave 20% untouched, 60% or so stained a burgundy red color, and around 20% stained a range of green, and every now and then to put in a light colored yellowish tan, as you can see too in this picture. Even though the textures were so different, the color match turned out well. One of the questions asked by many architects is, how well will a stained wall weather with the target wall? The answer to this question is yes, it will weather just fine. Here's one of the many examples. The older unstained wall on the right and the wall color match to it on the left survived 15 brutal winters and 15 long hot summers and still looks great today. Let's review rule number three, color enhancement. Follow this rule when rules one and two have been exhausted. When you can't find the right brick and you can't match by blending. Select your coloring system from companies that can show you their long-lasting jobs. Understand the difference between paint and stain, and especially between stain and watered-down paint. Also, when selecting a brick to stain, make sure that it is absorbent. If you have any doubt, check with your stain company. From absorbent brick, select by size first, then texture. Then try to get as close as you can in color as we talked about before. Consider the benefits of combining rules two and three. Try finding a good blend, then improving it with color enhancement. Here's a video showing the staining in motion from the test panel to completion. This was an auto impact to the left side of this wall and an insurance claim was made. Staining was an afterthought, so originally they had tried to match the brick the best they could. And on completion, of this project, the owner was not happy with the match. So a staining company was hired that applies a proven masonry stain. A test panel is applied, 
and bordered with a blue tape. The stain company colored the match the mortar first, and then the goal was to work on a base color to try to complement the wall that they're trying to match. Multiple colors were needed and enhancements were applied. Once done, then they wait for the homeowner's approval. Now approved, they remove the tape and expand the test panel. The stain company just needs to repeat what they did in the test panel. That is the standard they will be held to. Again, they stain the mortar first. They're using a one inch polyester brush and they're doing every joint, every head joint, every bed joint, all the way across the building. One start at the bottom, the other one start at the top. Mortar represents 18 to 20 percent of the wall, but has a huge effect on the actual color of the brick. So it's good to always level the wall first as you go through this. The background color, the base color of the wall, was completely off. It was the closest they could find. So they had to go through and color all the brick, or majority of the brick, to be similar to the brick on the right side. Then once they have that base color working for them, now they can start adding darks, and then adding enhancements. The brick in this wall, they're trying to match each individual brick. A lot of them are not a singular color, they're multicolored. So enhancements have to be added to get that exact look. This is with the project completed. As you see, here's the before. Here's the after. And the homeowner was very well pleased with this project. Specify staining. You have a couple different options, it's just how creative you want to be. You can actually specify staining right in with the brick that you specified itself. Just the brick manufacturer, the shade, and then color altered by a proven masonry stain, where there's 25% of whatever number that you wish to be altered. You could also just have a staining spec in your specifications, or you could have both. It's just, it's just what you want to do. The idea about staining is very flexible. So you could pick and choose after the brick are up in the wall exactly what you do, but for as far as bidding purposes, it's good to actually establish a number or range, whether it's 25% or 25 to 35%, whatever that might be or what might be needed. What is a proven masonry stain? We do not want a stain that can alter or hurt a brick or does not look natural. The stain should not repel water or leave a shine when wet or depending on the angle of the sun. There's a breathability test that could be performed on the stain. That's a good test to show. In the weather, depending on the severe weather or moderate weather, or really extremely temperatures, the stain you should, again, should not alter the brick. It should not blister. The stain should not peel. It should not fade. It should not crack. The mainstream stain company you choose should be filled, tested. That means if they've been around 20 years or so, they should have jobs that they can show you and take you to that are 20 years old. Not show you pictures of when they did it back then. What does it look like today? They can't show you jobs that are 10 or 15 years old that's performed the test of time, then that's a problem. Most, if not all, projects that require staining can be priced ahead of time. The owner and architect can control pricing by what you want done by staining a small percent or a large percent of the project. Knowing the square foot area is important, and here's an example from a drawing. After they know the square footage of the project, they'll need to know the height of the wall and see if it can be reached by a ladder. Will they require a lift or a swing stage? And also noting the elevations around the project, the layout of the land. It's also good to know if the project is prevailing wage or not. Now just decide what you want to do. What do you want to match? 
Is it a search and range and color, a color scheme? Is it a makeover? Are you actually doing a match to an addition that you want to mirror the wall? Even in doing so, it's not about perfect, but you can get close. Actually, you can get good. With staining, you can get a good match, but you decide how much you want to spend. You can decide, does the border need matched? How close it is? That's a yes or no. That will help control some cost there. Also is what is the percentage? Do you want some darks? Do you want some enhancements? Or do you want all the brick stained? Less staining you do will keep the cost down. The more staining you need, the cost will be higher, but you have that much flexibility to decide, and you might want to do it in phases. You might say, hey, I want you to do only 40% of the brick, get it up, take a look at it, and then stand back later and say, you know what? I want it to be a little bit closer. And then you could always add on more later. Staining is very flexible. And if you use a proof of masonry stain, it likes itself. It doesn't seal the wall. It's not like a paint-like product, and it could be applied over again. So again, the process is very flexible for you. Brick is sustainable. It's green. It's beautiful. It's strong. It's durable. Make sure that a proven masonry stain goes on this brick. We have a responsibility not to hurt a brick or alter that structure, that brick in any way. I shared my personal story in the beginning because I know brick up close and personal. I have had my hands on the raw materials and the raw clay. I've shaped it, added texture to it. I've cut it. My skin has been scorched by the heat from its kilns, and my muscles still remember what it takes to load and unload it day after day, even after all these years. I like brick and believe our mission is to preserve the brick. It's natural, non-toxic, and ruggedly good-looking, and it offers a great contrast when it's paired with wood, steel, glass, vinyl, or other building materials. But mostly, brick is about permanence. Brick lasts, brick endures, year after year, decade after decade, and century after century. I respect that endurance. That's why we should never interfere with it. We should never hurt a brick because of what we apply to it. In general, brick does not require maintenance. It doesn't need to be painted ever. Unless it's destroyed by a vehicle impact or by some man-made or natural disaster, it needs nothing. After so many years, the mortar may need tough pointing, but the brick itself is sufficient, and we can play a part to keep it that way. New brick gets its color from the colored substances, the pigments that are in the part of it that's, that's in the product itself. A proven masonry stain simply adds additional pigment particles to those that are already present. Then result is brick, brick with additional particles embedded in its pore structure. It feels like brick, it looks like brick, and it absorbs water and expels water vapor like brick because it remains 100% of brick. Painting brick is something else. We have seen those non-proven paints and stains begin to fade, peel, crack, bubble, blister in just a few years. Paint is easy to apply, but it may be difficult or impossible to completely remove. We don't take permanent maintenance-free brick and make it into a long maintenance problem. I hope you enjoy today's learning objectives, why brick doesn't match, the rule number one of finding the right brick. Rule number two, blending different kinds of brick together and make sure they're compatible. And then when you need to, you add color enhancement. And then briefly, we talked a little bit about how to specify brick matching. Last, this concludes the informational portion of this course. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to send them to me at the email address shown on the screen. You can use the same address to write to request a certificate. At this point, please return to the course start page and click on the link to take your quiz on the material we have covered. Those of you who are members of the IA will receive a one hour credit for this course if you receive a passing grade of 80% or better. If you do not pass, you can retake the test or the entire course as many times as you like. Immediately following the test, you will have the opportunity to complete a short evaluation form. Please be kind. And thank you so much. Don Foster.